Hey guys, what's up? I Bubba's coming at you with another D2 video. We're going to continue today with our class set run. Uh, this is episode two, and we'll be going into the Paladin class set, Griswold's Legacy. Uh, one of the good things about this set is it has a a ton of sockets on it, making it great to just tailor it to whatever you want to do. Uh, some PVPers will use this set for a foer, um, and it's pretty good for foe in general, but I just don't like foe, uh, Fist of Heavens, for PVM, so, yeah, we're gonna be doing an Avenger today. More on that later. Let's get right into what this set has to offer. So we're going to start off with 3 to Paladin skill levels, 30 faster hit recovery, 200 attack rating, 20 strength, 30 dex, 150 life, and 50 all res. Pretty nice setup uh, for a set. So we're going to get into the first item is the weapon, Griswold's Redemption, Catechus, Cate Catechus, well, I don't know how to say that word. But yeah, a hammer, it's a hammer, okay? <clears throat> So this thing has 40% increased attack speed, has some ED, uh, some damage to undead, because you're a paladin, so you got to do more damage to undead, I guess, and negative 20 requirements, and it also offers us four sockets. That's insane. We can basically put whatever we want in it, and as you can see from the 80% crushing blow, we have decided to go with four burr runes absolutely insane now with the set bonus you get a little added damage plus you get plus two to combat skills so pretty nice uh weapon is very fast attack speed so i th ooh, hit my mic there uh so we do need a little extra attack speed to hit some break points which we'll go over on gear later but you could throw like shales in this, or you could throw like 15, uh, some 15 IS jewels in it to hit your break points, but, but yeah, we've got some other gear to handle that later. Going into the Corona, Griswold's Valor, we have some Defense, we have some All Res, we have some Cold Absorb, some Magic Fine, and negative 40 requirements. And it does have two sockets as well, which we put with some ED jewels and life jewels. That's why we have 80 enhanced damage, 40 life. Just a little added something. Um, we get plus two to offensive auras uh, with the set. Not too bad. All in all, the helmet's not bad. Two sockets make it okay as well. So it's not a bad item by itself. We got the chest peak. Griswold's heart ornate plate comes with two of two defensive auras comes with some defense some strength some less requirements and it has a whopping three sockets and of course we fill those with enhanced damage life jewels uh, this chest piece is pretty good by itself uh, you know it's something that you can just throw on throw some whatever's in it has three sockets. Uh, you could also throw it on a mercenary early. is really nice because you can put like, you know, some jewels or something in it. Some gems. Uh, whatever you need. Uh, that's what's great with three sockets. Uh, and decent defense as well. And then the fourth piece is Griswold's Honor Vortex Shield. Um, nice base. Has some block rate enhanced chance of blocking has some defense has some all res has three sockets again i just put some ed life jewels in there you know you can do whatever you want light faucets whatever uh amazing items uh the set overall is pretty good um so yeah let's get into the other pieces we put with us first is high lord's wrath this is going to give us some plus to all skills and some 20 increased attack speed remember we need an extra 40 to hit our break points so this is the first piece that gives us that gives us a little added lightning damage gives us some deadly strikes and lightning res pretty good overall 
Next is just, this is just a Magic Fine Mana Steel Life Steel Ring. Now, Mana Steel and Life Steel don't work the greatest for a Vengeance uh, because we are doing elemental damage, and elemental damage isn't really giving us mana or life back that much, so it's not the best. You could just put like a Raven Frost or something here. But we do have another Raven Frost, obviously. Uh, cannot be frozen. Dex, attack rating. Like, Raven Frost is just amazing for most builds. You could just put another Raven Frost here. You could put a BK Ring. Uh, you could put a Nature's Peace, Carrion, Dwarf Star, whatever you choose. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes I like to keep a few extra unique rings in my stash just for certain things. Uh, you know, or you could just put a Nagel ring on. For our belt, we're using String of Ears. Um, you could use Dungos, uh, is pretty nice. You could use Thunder Gods. The reason I'm not using this Thunder Gods is because it's upped and it uses too much strength for me, so I'm not using it. But it gives some nice lightning absorb and other great stats. T Gods is an amazing belt, so is Dungos. I just really like string of ears so that's why i've got it on um for boots i'm using gore riders uh faster run roll crushing blow deadly strike open wounds just some really nice damage um and this helps us hit 95 percent crushing blow with our weapon uh, plus the deadly strike and open wounds is pretty decent and then for gloves, I chose to use the absolute best gloves in the game. Like, don't even come at me and tell me I'm wrong because these gloves are just amazing. Actually, these aren't even the best gloves in the game. These are like the best item in the game. I love laying of hands. So we get our extra 20 attack speed. You get some chance to cast some Holy Bolt. You get a whopping 350% damage to demons. We're going to be killing lots of demons because we're, we're an Avenger Paladin. That's what we do. We kill some demons. Has some nice fire resist and some defense. So, yeah. That's our, our gear. We do have a CTA and a Spirit Shield uh, just for bow. Bowing up. You could use a Paladin Shield. Um, a Paladin Spirit Shield. Instead of a Monarch, it might save you a little bit of strength. Because you can see our strength requirements uh, are pretty decently low. But I do have these Upgore Riders uh, that require 156 anyway. So that's why I just put the Spirit Shield. Okay, let's get into our inventory. Of course, we got a Torch. We got an Annie. Uh, we got some Combat Skill, 40 Lifers. Uh, combat Skills... Are pretty decent for this build why not um, most likely you're probably gonna have some combat skillers laying around anyway cuz you're probably gonna make a hammered or something so I just threw them on um, also I got like some 320 20s no big deal but really like you don't need all this you can just put some like lifers some magic find whatever it is you choose um, I always hate, sh I, I always hate showing off charms and I hate, but I also hate not showing off charms because when I don't show off charms, everybody's like, oh, you don't even have charms. What a noob. Uh, and then if you show off charms, you're like, oh my God, those charms are so freaking good. Like, why are you showing us like these insane charms? Whatever. Here's my charms. If you like it, whatever. You don't need any of this stuff. The build works fine without charms. Charms just help push it over the edge. So whatever. Uh, for those of you who aren't, you know, are new to D Diablo, coming for Resurrected, just know that, like, you don't need these insane charms, uh, especially for this build, but they help a little. Um, and for PvP, obviously, you want insane charms. Uh, but for PVM, it doesn't really matter. Just do whatever you like. Don't listen to anybody else, especially not me. So, like I said, this is an elemental build, so I am using Infinity. Uh, we got Fortitude, 
And we got Andario's visage on our Merc. Why can I never say visage? Visage. I always struggle with that for some reason when I try to just rattle it off. But anyway, Andario's visage. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Going into our stats, pretty normal setup. Enough strength uh, to wear my boots and my shield, which is 156. Uh, Dex is actually one of those strange things. So for Dex on a Paladin, if you're going max block, which most, most Paladins do, uh, what you want to do is if you have battle orders, you want to come cast battle orders and you want to put on your holy shield. Make sure your holy shield's on, come back to town, and then you want to put in enough decks to where your chance to block says 75% chance to block. And you want to keep watching this because every level your chance to block can go down. So every level, check it. If you need a couple more points, put a couple more points in the dexterity. On this build, you don't have to go max block. I just choose to because why not? Uh, it's pretty easy, uh, especially with holy shield. So why not just put a few extra points in the decks? We still have plenty in the Vitality. You see with Bad Orders, we're at 3,500 life, so we're doing okay. We can we can waste a little Dex going max block. And also note on this screen that I have 80 to all res, and I'll explain that when I get into the skills, because it's something a lot of people don't know. Uh, and some people actually think this is a PD2 Thing, Project Diablo 2 if you guys have played it but it's actually in Diablo 2 um, so going into our skills we have Vengeance uh, as you can see it adds fire, lightning, and cold damage per each successful attack for our synergies you can see we get uh, added from resist fire, resist cold, resist lightning, and salvation. Um, so yeah, you can also put at least one point in the holy shield. What I usually do is I start with a point in the holy shield. Some people will max holy shield. I don't like maxing holy shield. I put one point into it, and then when I'm done with all the other stuff I want, this is just where I throw my extra points in. Eventually, it probably will be maxed out because, you know, by the time I hit 95, I'll have it maxed. But anyway, into offensive auras. Now, there's two ways that you can build this. If you have an Infinity Merc, I like using Fanaticism uh, because this, you need, altogether, you need 108 attack speed. So with Fanaticism, with the Griswold set, we only need an extra 40% that comes from our Laying of Hands and our our uh, our High Lord's Amulet. However, if you just have some 15 IS jewels to put in your gear, you can get rid of Fanaticism and you can go to Conviction Aura and then you don't have to use Infinity. You can use the Insight Merc, you can use a Reaper Toll Max Damage Merc. So you can go Convention or just run Convention or yourself. Uh, since I have an Infinity Merc, I just went ahead and went with Fanaticism, and that allows me to not put 15 IS jewels in my gear. Uh, you can put the, like you can just fill this full of IS jewels until you get to the 108% breakpoint. Right now we are at 110% breakpoint with all our gear and Fanaticism on. So yeah. Lot of, lot of complicated stuff uh, with Paladin sometimes, but it's worth it in the end. Now, defensive auras, this is where things get kind of crazy again. Obviously, I got a point in Salvation because it is a synergy, so why not throw a point in it? Uh, this can also help with if you're playing like a Chaos game or a Bale game with a group. You can help some of the people that may not be... Uh, may not be res capped plus it does give uh, some damage to your party so why not pop it on uh, redemption is super good I use redemption all the time on paladin it keeps me from chugging potions basically you kill a bunch of enemies you switch to redemption and bam you're full on life and mana again 
Vigor is an absolute like must on a paladin. Makes you run super fast. Makes your whole party run super fast. So I like making sure I have a point in Vigor. Obviously we need it to get to Redemption anyway, so why not? Now here's the thing with our synergies. Um, you can just max one of these, like max Lightning. Some people would just like max the Lightning one and then they'll... They'll max lightning and then they'll put like a bunch of lightning faucets in and that way when they hit the lightning on their vengeance it does more damage. But what I like to do is for every 10 base points, now that's 10 base points, right? That's not, uh, that's not uh, uh, like soft points that you get from like skills. You can see I have like 21 in all of these except for this one. But for every 10 points you put into these, you will get five max all res. So if I went put each of these to 20, I would get 10 max all res. And right now I'd be at 85 on all these. Uh, but putting, you know, I don't have that many skill points to spend. So I just put 10 points into each one of these. And that gets me my max all res on these. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, this is very uh, good to do on a smiter as well, uh, just to get some extra overcapped res. Um, so yeah, a little thing a lot of people don't know, uh, Project Diablo 2 actually made this a lot more known. And some people actually think that it's exclusive to Project Diablo 2, but I'm like, no, this is something that's been in Diablo 2 forever. Just, you know, a lot of people don't know about it. Because... You know, most guides and stuff don't have you put anything into this. So, like, nobody knows that this actually does anything. But, yeah, just a little uh, little tidbit there for you guys. So, now that we've covered everything, I hope that you guys, like, didn't get lost in that part. Paladin can be a little, a little overwhelming, all the different stuff that there is in it. But hopefully it's easy for you guys to understand. And yeah, I guess all that's left is to go kill some stuff. Um, the place I always like to go first is the good old Frigid Highlands. Put our bow up. And we'll keep fanaticism up, as you can see. Switch to Vigor. When you get to your, where you're going, cast your fanaticism again. You can see I'm out of mana. Switch to redemption. Bam, full mana. And this guy's just going ham. Put back on my vigor. Let's go let's go see what's up with Shank. Ooh, large shield. Let's go see what's going on with Shank down here. This is the worst part is I can't just like I can't just get in the shank, you know what I mean? You have to kind of bait it a little bit. Mm, that's a good drop. Boom. Put our vigor back on. So yeah, that's the one downside to this build is it's it doesn't have teleport, obviously, and it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't do <laughs> like AOE damage. Right, so you pretty much just have to attack things one at a time, but hey. The build is still fun, and it's still pretty fast. It's not too bad. Um, especially with Vigor, you can run through stuff. And you kill stuff really fast, which is nice. Uh, that's really nice with this build. Even bosses and stuff, because we have a ton of crushing blow. Uh, just makes this build fun to play. It's not as great for uh, for magic finding, but overall, if you're just looking to kill some monsters, this build is super good. So yeah, why not? Uh, why not do it? Should I keep going? I don't know. I kind of feel like killing Bale, uh, to be honest. Um, I guess you guys can stop watching the video now if you want, or you can watch me go kill Bale. I'll put on some Vigor to make it a little faster. Um, but yeah, I kind of just feel like killing Bale right now, so that's what I'm going to go do. I'll try to run through some stuff. So as to not make the video like 30 minutes long or something. These guys are nasty. Of 
course I went the wrong way. Somebody should have told me that earlier. That I, I was going the wrong way. But, you know. <clears throat> we'll find uh, the throne room sooner or later. No. These guys just have to die. And you can see, like, not so much life steal happening. So, we do, however, can take a load of damage. Switch to redemption. Where is the throne room? Man, this guy's gotta go. Guy's extra strong. Give me some goodies. <sighs> Come on. Dang, where is this uh, throne room? Oh, of course, it's up here. Alright, Throne of Destruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tied all these snakes in this daggone throne room. If only Samuel L. Jackson was here to help us clear out the snakes in the throne room. So, uh, rebow here a little bit, and hopefully our max block helps us out here. Not for these guys, these guys are uh, easy. Come on, Bale, let's go. You can see our attack speed though is pretty nice. Hitting those break points. And you know, when you play this with a hammered in, you get to this point and you're like, oh my god, everything's magic immune. With this build, you're just like, who cares if everything is magic immune? I love Paladin. Paladin's so good. Just, is there a bad Paladin build? Don't answer that. I know there is, but it still makes it fun. some council members. They are doing damage to my boy. Oh, get out of here, you snake. Dirty snakes. I can't carry any Really? recommend some uh, some full potions for this uh, build since you can't life leech too well I don't think I grabbed the corpses in time Woo! my minion is gonna die yep there he went these guys are nasty even with max block. Good evening. Let's reset. Go get our Merc back. Evening. My uh, weapon's getting a little yellow. You're back. From fighting too much. All right, let's try this again. These guys are always pain for melee, especially. Smack down these guys. Alright, 
easy peasy. Let's go get bail. Keep forgetting my redemption again. Maybe. Come on, bail. We got this. Stop with your stupidness, Bail. Dang it, Bail. There we go. Now we're getting some hits in. And then once our crushing blow wears off, it's kind of a little slower. As you know, crushing blow doesn't work that great when you get this low health, so you gotta kind of bash on him a little bit. Ooh, nausea circle. But there you have it. That's our Griswold build. Pretty fun, pretty exciting. Pretty good build. Uh, plus, you can tell everybody you're playing the Avenger Paladin. So yeah, pretty fun. I will see you guys in the next video.